going back, I'm amazed that, so you started in 1960? 78. Jack Blum started in 1960. Right. Um, my interest, um, I suppose, was spurred uh, partly by the fact I grew up in Jersey at the time and in rural Jersey on a farm. Um, very privileged yeah. uh, life I, I had. Um, but it was intriguing as a teenager to, that, uh, you know, suddenly. Bank of America, Bank of India. What turned up in Jersey? Oh, Bank of Canada, <laughs> Bank of Nova Scotia. Where is Nova Scotia? You know, <laughs> what's this doing here? Who are these people? Yeah. Um, and um, uh, up, up to a point, um, the, the people who were turning up in Jersey, and I was meeting them at parties and events and meeting them at school with their kids, uh, were quite extraordinary people. Um, and, um, you know, it, it, the, the British spirits amongst them were, you know, Second Empire fantasists, and you know, we must revive Britain's ability to control and dominate the rest of the world types. You <laughs> know, we still own China. <laughs> yes, no, absolutely. So, so you know, right, right from, you know, a, a very young age, it, it seemed to me that, um, it, or rather, it was clear to me that this was about politics. This was a new kind of. Um, financial imperialism or whatever term you want to, I don't use that term, but yeah. a, a, a new way that somehow we had discovered, um, and, it, it, and it's, it was interesting when I, I worked with Nick Shackson on Treasure Islands, it was fascinating to me that 1956 seemed to be quite pivotal. In 1956, mm. Suez, the Suez crisis, saw the end to what's called the formal British Empire. That's, most people accept that. But in 1956, the City of London managed to persuade the Bank of England to allow the emergence of a totally deregulated, dollar-denominated, euro-dollar market in London. And that started, triggered off some, an entirely new for global economy, an unregulated, out, sitting outside the Brooklyn yeah. settlement. And I, it, it, I don't know whether that was coincidence or what. I, I don't think it, it, uh, what, it was anything other than coincidence. But it did seem to me at the time uh, when we started looking into this, the fascinating thing is about that was why didn't the British government take action? Why did the British government quite simply let this roll on and on? It was almost like the Saucer's Apprentice had started a spell and had no idea how to get the thing back in the box.